In this week's episode, South Africa's youngest university student at only 11. But first, giving amputees a chance to dream. Thousands of South African amputees are not able to go to school because they can't afford prosthetics. The waiting period in state hospitals is quite long. Johannesburg resident Michael Stevens has decided to do something about it. Being an amputee himself, he selflessly gives his time and skills to an organization that raises funds for children who cannot afford prosthetics. August the 9th, 1992, a family outing at the Val Dam. It was one of those amazing early summer high felt days. Uh, the sun was shining, magnificent blue skies. Michael Stevens and his two siblings left their mother at home to enjoy this part of the country. At the time, their father was in Spain representing South Africa at the Barcelona Olympics. My uncle had just got a land yacht, which is a windsurfer with wheels, triangle frame, mast with a sail, and it goes on sand roads or beaches and things like that. An excited Michael drove the yacht towards the dam, leaving his elder sister and brother at the cottage. Ahead on the path, there were low-lying cables. I just assumed that they were telephone poles because there was no sign. Rolling freely down the road, the tip of Michael's yard touched the cables. They turned out to be live. Thousands of volts now passed through the 12-year-old's little body. It knocked me out and put me onto the grass. Uh, the heat going through my body actually started to set the grass alight beneath me. Caroline and her brother Richard rushed to see what was going on. Michael was about three meters away from this land yacht. And uh, sure, we just packed him up in the car as quickly as possible. With 70% burns, Michael was taken to Chris Honey Baragwanath, the only hospital with a burns unit at the time. Doctors discovered Michael's legs had been so badly burned, they had no alternative but to amputate them. Seven long months in hospital, and then Michael was discharged in a wheelchair. Oh, we just said, right, this is our life. We're going to support Michael and we're going to get him through it. And we're going to try and give him every opportunity. Um, and remind him that he's a complete person. This amazing support kept the teenager going. His friends at school gave him all the help he needed. If I needed a shoulder to carry on or jump down the stairs or whatever, there was always somebody there willing to, to give me that shoulder to rest on to jump down the stairs. Michael showed incredible courage and gradually learned to use prosthetics. By year three, uh, grade 10, I was walking and then it became how far can I walk, can I walk without crutches, and you know, you, you just keep evolving and improving. In no time, Michael began leading a normal life. In the decades to follow, he moved on to university, traveled overseas, and went into the automotive industry. But throughout his journey, something always bothered him. 
What happens to kids who can't afford to get a prosthetic and how does it impact their lives? Can they still go to school? Do you know, how does it impact their lives current and their future going forward? Michael later met Johan Sneders, who was in the business of making artificial limbs. As luck would have it, Johan was running an organization called Jumping Kids, providing prosthetics to children who can't afford them. Government hospitals sometimes up to have a, a three-year waiting list for a prosthesis. Now if you look at something like Varaguana, if you've got cancer as a child and you're not having a leg, you can't go to a school, and if you have to wait three years for a leg, you know, the chances of you getting education is, 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 is not going to happen. Jumping Kids was a perfect platform for Michael to give his time and skills without expecting anything in return. Today, he does marketing for the organization, helping to get sponsors to donate money for more amputees to get prosthetics. I realized there's an opportunity here to do something great, to help a lot of the kids I've met who were awesome and uh, just needed the opportunity that I had growing up. Junior Mavuso lost a leg in a freak train accident when he was three years old. Jumping Kids helped him with a prosthetic, enabling him to become a successful sportsman and build a future for himself. I've achieved 12 gold medals, three silver medals and two bronze medals. I'm a holder of the under 20 long jump world record. There you have it. As always, we appreciate your feedback. Against all odds at enca.com, you can also be in touch with us on Twitter and Facebook. Still to come, what is an 11-year-old kid doing at the University of the Western Cape?